Hi everyone and welcome back to the Shanae Lee Show. This video is actually inspired by my next video which will be up next Friday. And all of this was inspired by the fact that I was reading Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. I actually finished reading this the day before I filmed both of these videos, this video and next week's video. First off, it was a really fun read and I feel like it was pretty well executed. And while I was invested in the story and in the characters, it felt like a story that I had seen before because I grew up on Inuyasha. So it felt like a story that I had already seen before and as I said, while I was invested in the characters and the story, it didn't feel fresh to me. It didn't feel new. But despite that, I still really enjoyed this book. It was a fun read. But because this is a story I have liked through Inuyasha, and and it is a story that I liked within this book. I wanted to do a couple of videos where I did some recommendations relating to this book. As you can tell from the title of this video, this is 10 books that you can read if you liked Shadow of the Fox. And then next week's video is 7 anime to watch if you liked Shadow of the Fox. And next week's video, the 7 anime to watch, actually inspired this video because I was like, wait, I could also do a book recommendations list. And these two videos felt really fitting right before Anime Expo and right before those videos start because Shadow of the Fox really feels like it could be translated into an anime. I do want to say, however, that I know that Shadow of the Fox is the first book in a trilogy. However, for me, I do not think I will be continuing with that trilogy. The first book felt like it wrapped up nicely enough for me. And while there is some more stuff to explore, which is why there's books two and three, I don't feel like I need to continue. I don't feel like I want to continue, even though I did enjoy the first book. But with all that said, let's get into this video. All of these books that I'm about to recommend if you liked Shadow of the Fox are under that overarching theme of trying to restore something, the friendships you make along the way, the found family you get along the way. So it fits underneath that, although these specific books may not fit within specific themes or tropes found in Shadow of the Fox. First up is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. I don't feel like I need to explain this one too much, but essentially our main character Dante gets accused for something that he did not do and gets sent to prison on Chateau d'If and stays there, escapes, and starts planning his revenge. Next up is Bravely by Maggie Stiffhater. This is a sequel to the Pixar movie Brave and it follows Merida over the course of this year of trying to make sure that things are still in motion, that things are changing if they need to, that things are still moving so that she can make sure her family stays safe. The third book on this list is Almost There, A Disney Twisted Tale by Farrah Roshan, and this is centered around the premise of what if Tiana had taken the deal with Dr. Facilier? What if she said yes to his deal? We're following that storyline of Tiana having her restaurant, being able to serve people, being able to run a business on her own as a black woman in the 1920s New Orleans. Next up is the Six Crimson Cranes duology by Elizabeth Lim, which is Six Crimson Cranes and The Dragon's Promise. I'm just going to hold up the first book because that's the most important one. Six Crimson Cranes follows Shiori, the only princess of Kiata, as she tries to save her brothers after they have been turned into cranes by their stepmother. Next up is Independence by Chicho Banerjee Diva Karuni. If I'm saying the author's name wrong, please correct me in the comments. But this is set in 1947 India and Bengal and the partition during that time during British reign over India and Bengal. And it follows three sisters who are trying to navigate this time their feelings for each other, navigate the feelings for their love interests.
Next up is As Long As the Lemon Trees Grow by Zufa Katu. Again, if I'm saying the author's name wrong, please let me know in the comments. I'm currently reading this one, so I'm just going to give a very, very brief description of this. This book is set during the first couple of years of the Syrian revolution, and we're following our main character, Salama. If I'm saying the name wrong, again, correct me in the comments. As she tries to figure out what she needs to do, how she needs to get to her sister-in-law, and how she's going to survive, and also dealing with the side effects of PTSD. The eighth book on this list is The Circus Train by Amita Parikh. This is set during World War II and we're following a circus throughout Europe and specifically we're following Lena and her father Theo as they try to deal with Lena being in a wheelchair and the side effects of her childhood bout with polio. The ninth book on this list is Kaikeyi by Vaishnavi Patel. Again, pronunciation, help me out if I'm getting it wrong. This story follows our main character, Kaikeyi, who was born under a very important constellation. She is often overlooked while her brother, who shares the same birthday, is praised and lauded for having that birthday and being born under that same constellation. After years of being overlooked, Kaikeyi turns to the scrolls that she read with her mother, turns herself into a warrior, a diplomat, and a very well-versed politician. Chaos starts to ensue and she has to trudge through these waters through this mud of what to do. The tenth and final book on this list is River Sing Me Home by Eleanor Shearer. This story follows our main character Rachel who is on the Providence Plantation in Barbados and in 1834 the Emancipation Proclamation goes into effect or is about to go into effect and as a result the slaves are free. However, the slaves are not allowed to leave because they are now the plantation owner's apprentices and they have to learn for a certain number of years. They have to stay for a certain number of years before they are allowed to leave. However, Rachel Rachel runs and begins attempting to search for her children whom she was separated from. I have three honorable mentions that I would like to discuss before finishing up this video. First up is the Legendborn trilogy, I think it's gonna be, but only the first two books are out and I think that we know about. First book is Legendborn and the second book is Bloodmarked. I'm gonna show the cover for the first book, Legendborn. I'm gonna read a little bit of the Goodreads description for Legendborn and then I'm gonna move on to the third honorable mention. After her mother dies in an accident, 16 year old Bree Matthews wants nothing to do with her family memories or childhood home. A residential program for bright high schools at UNC Chapel Hill seems like the perfect escape until Brie witnesses a magical attack her very first night on campus. So that's Legendborn and Bloodmark follows a very similar plot. Before I mention this very last recommendation, I do want to mention that these are honorable mentions because these are books that I've heard a lot about and have heard a lot of good things about and know the basic premises of, but I personally have not gotten around to reading them as of yet. The third and final honorable mention is Did You Hear About Kitty Carr by Crystal Paul Smith. And this book follows the death of Kitty Carr Tate, a famous actress who was on the silver screen for many years and she leaves all of her money and her estate to three black sisters and people are trying to figure out the secrets as to why. If you have any other recommendations for books that are similar to Shadow of the Fox or fit within that similar vein, leave them down below in the comments. I would love to hear them. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for my next video.